Hi, welcome. I'm Tom Mihawk, and this video is about using the Hewlett Packard 12C calculator. Here it is right here. I first used this as a graduate business student, and I'm still using this, teaching this with my personal finance courses. Let's take a closer look. I've had one of these since I worked in investment banking out of graduate business school way back in the Stone Ages. We just had a grad business school um, classmate discussion and people were asking, who still uses the HP 12C? And I said, I'd use it to teach with and I use it otherwise too. But I use it to teach in the personal finance course because it's so good to learn how to use this to learn time value of money calculations. It's much easier and it helps teach the concepts of time value of money. I have four or five of these around the house. But most of my family members have used them. Some have gone to other things, but they've all learned to use them. I use it, as I said, in investment banking and in my finance work, and I've just stayed with it and continued to use it. It's, as I said, great for using with time value of money problems. It's much better than using tables. As an undergrad engineer, which I was, I learned how to use time value of money problems using tables. Now, I was good at equations and things like that and numbers and calculations, but I had no idea. I couldn't understand what time value of money, present value, future value, number of periods. I couldn't understand what it meant. And it was because using these tables wasn't very helpful. Using a calculator and it was much better. Now, why is this such a superior calculator? Well, let me show you. Here's an example. This is just a little numeric sort of algebra problem, right? Not real hard. Now, if I had to do this with this calculator, and I'm exaggerating a little bit, I know, people probably don't, I mean, this is only one step better than an abacus, but people probably don't use this anymore. But if I had to do it this way, I'd do on five plus three equals divided by 27, then I'd store that, that doesn't seem right, and I'd do, um, clear 100 no 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 i, I clear and i do 1 plus 0 0.1 equals times 100 equals plus memory equals i didn't get it but watch and this is for any problem that has parentheses and it's a little bit more complicated and this is just simple arithmetic but watch i would do it with this calculator this way I do five, enter, three, plus, and I'm gonna show you how to do this in the rest of this video, don't worry. 27 divide, one, enter, point one, plus, 100 times, plus, and there's the answer, 110.3. Easy, less keystrokes, easy to do. And if you make a mistake, you clear it really quick, try it again and make sure you get it right. Now, if we're doing, for example, something this is more useful to personal finance, these mortgage kinds of questions. So let's take an example, 30 year fixed mortgage at three and a half percent, 15 year fixed mortgage at three and a seven year adjustable rate mortgage at two and a half. And let's say we're borrowing, let's say $300,000. So 300,000, and again, we'll go through this in the course, if not here, but we're certainly gonna go through how to use this calculator to do these kinds of problems, but we'll go over these kinds of specific problems in the course. So $300,000 is my, I have to change the sign, my present value, 30 years, and 3.5% interest. My payment is gonna be $1,300, 1340, seven and 13 cents. Now, I don't have to memorize anything. I don't have to do anything but just change the number. So to make it, to change it to the 15 year fix, I just do 15, put that in for the number of periods, 3%, put that in for the interest rate payment. There it is, $2,071.74. And if I wanna do the seven one arm, I just change back to 30 years, 2.5% interest, payment and there it is 1185 and 36 cents no I don't have to use storage which I have I have 10 storage locations on this calculator but I don't have to use them I don't have to put in any parentheses 
I don't have to clear anything. It's very easy, and that's why I like it so much. So now let's take a look in more detail at what the numbers are, what the buttons are, how they work, and how to use this calculator. Okay, let's take a look at the detail. Now, wait till you see what I have to show you. Look at this thing. So there are several YouTube videos about using the Hewlett Packard 12C calculator. And I wanted to do my own because I think I could do it better. And, and believe me, some of these have been around for eight years, six years, have 60 and 70,000 views. That's terrific. But it's always blurry. And I tried all these different ways. This is actually a photo of the actual calculator blown up. So hopefully this makes it really easy to see. So let's start from the beginning. Here's the on button. Push it, click it on and off, turns these digits off and on. This is just a display, by the way. There's no memory in this. It just shows, this is just showing numbers. So push it on and off here, okay? This is the clear X button. This clears the screen. It doesn't clear any memory. It doesn't clear anything you have stored. It just makes, turns this back to zero. And let's do a quick overview. Um, here are your digits, one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. Here are your operators, divide, times, minus, plus, your enter key. And you might say, well, what do I need an enter key for? Well, I'll tell you in a second. Here's your change sign button. This goes, changes things from negative to positive. And that's valuable. I'll tell you why in a minute. Here are all your time value of money buttons, number of periods, interest rate, present value, future value, payments if you have an annuity. Very important. This clears this numeric screen, but if you see this bracket with the, with the word clear here, this clears your finance registers and this clears your memory registers. You should do that every so often with this calculator because if you don't, it'll give you odd results. It, it's a little cranky. It needs, you know, it needs, you need to start out when you first turn it on before you've memorized any, put anything in memory or storage, hit the, um, the orange button, which is F, orange button, and that activates this clear finance, orange button, this one here, clear registers. So it activates the clear finance and clear registers, and that gets it happy, gets it ready to go and start doing calculations for you. So I mentioned before this enter key. What is this enter key for? If I can get this right. The enter key, this uses what back in the day was called reverse and then an ethnic group and then notation. I'll just call it reverse backwards notation. Okay, how about that? Reverse backwards notation. But this is what enables you to use to not need all the parentheses like I showed you earlier. What happens is when you want to use the calculator, you just do very something very simple. Two plus two equals four, right? You do, you push two, do it with me. Two, if you have the calculator, two, enter, two plus, and that gives you four. Let me show you. Two, enter, two plus gives you four. Now that doesn't mean a lot, except when you're doing something like this, when you can do five, enter three plus 27, divide one, enter 0 0.1 plus 100 times and then plus button again and get 110.3 and not have to do parentheses, equal sign, parentheses, and figure out how all that's gonna work for you, for yourself. Okay. Another simple one, four times five. Four, enter, five times gives you 20. 10 divided by two, one, zero, enter, to divide. Very easy. And then if you want to clear the number that's in the display, you just hit clear X. All right. For future value, 
present value, we would do, all we need, by the way, is three of the four. We don't need all of them. So if we have a simple issue like um, 100 is the present value at 10% for one year, what do we get in the future? We would just do 100, we just do 100 zero, zero, PV, don't have to do enter, just do 100 zero, zero, PV, 100 zero, I because it's annual, one time annually, one for one period, N, and then hit FV and it'll calculate it for us. Very easy. Watch. 100 present value, one period, 10 I future value. Oops. 100 present value, one year N, 10% I future value. There it is. 110. Now notice it shows it as negative. And it does that because it works in a vector, like a vector. So in the example I just did, it assumes that the 100 in the beginning is an outflow, and at the end you get 100 back, plus your interest of 10%. And so it's designed so that it shows one in an op so that they're in opposite directions of each other, one negative, one positive. When you're doing time value of money problems, you'll need to do the same. So, for example, if you're doing these, and let's say you're borrowing, I forget the example we used before, 300,000, I think we said. So if we have 30 years fixed, 3.5%, we have to do this. We do 300,000, change sign button, present value. That's the way we decide how much we're borrowing. 30 years fixed. Notice 360 periods. I'll tell you how I got that in a second. 3.5, we divide by 12 to get a monthly, and we hit payment, and there's our payment. 1347. I had to use a negative on the principal. It's like an outflow. I'm borrowing 300,000 and I'm positively making these payments. If you don't put the negative in, it's no problem. If you put in 300,000, it'll just give you a negative payment, which probably makes more sense. You take in 300,000 to borrow to buy your house and you pay out, it's an outflow, you pay out 1347 a month. Now, a little trick. This is one thing that makes this calculator, among many things, so terrific. Hit the blue G key, put uh, type um, 30 years, 3-0, blue G key, N, and see that little on the bevel right there? It says 12 times. It does it automatically for you. So you just do 30, blue G key, N, and it automatically turns it into a monthly pay, a number, monthly number of periods for 30 years, 360. Same thing with the rate of interest, three and a half. Oops. Blue G key I, it automatically divides by 12, so you get a monthly interest rate. It automatically does this. Now, when you do time value money problems, you're going to have to look at quarterly payments, annual. If it's annual, you can just use the N and the I buttons. If it's monthly, you have to use the blue G key and put in blue G key N periods, blue G key I rate of interest for monthly payments and monthly rate of interest. If it's quarterly, you're gonna to have to multiply by four and then enter that as a number of periods and divide by four and enter that as the interest rate. Let's do that by hand. To set the number of decimal places, you hit F and the number, 2, F, 3, take a look. See, it's automatically defaulted at 2. But if I want to have 4, I do F, 4. Now I have four pla decimal places. Or F, 6, and I have six decimal places. For most finance calculations, sorry, I have to go backwards the way it seems. For most finance calculations, 
Two is fine. Corresponds to sense. Right? Storage locations. This calculator, I believe, has 10, but I know it certainly has 9. And if you want to store something, you hit a number 12, store 1. It puts it in register 1. Then you do, if you want, the 20, 2, 0, store 2. Stores it in 2. And then to pull them back out again, watch, 12, store 1, 20, store 2. OK, to pull them out again, I just do reclaim 1 pulls out the 12 and I hit reclaim 2 and pulls out the 20. There are at least 9 and I think there are 10 storage locations. You can store all kinds of numbers if you need to. Again, just so you can see that larger. Store and then you you least your 9, reclaim to bring it out again, store 2, store 3, whatever. When you have put in 30-year fixed mortgage, gotten your 1347 in this case, we're borrowing $300,000. You want to compare it to a 15-year. Let's say you want to compare it to another 30-year. Let's say you get three and a quarter. So you put in 3.25. Blue G key I divides automatically for you. The new payment, remember the other one was 1347, the new one's now 1305. No clears, no storing anything. Easy. Let's say you want to compare to a 15 year and you want to pay less interest. You're going to pay more in, in, in uh, payment, but you have less interest and you finish paying in 15 years. So 15, blue G key N multiplies automatically by. Uh, 12, and let's say it's 3%, blue G key I divides for a monthly interest rate, and our payment now, just as we figured, is greater, $2,071.74. And it's easy to do, so when we're making these kind of comparisons, and I'll work on some problems like this in the personal finance course. Easy to do with this calculator. All right, I think that's it. Here's, this is a great example. I'm hopeful that this is the clearest one that you're gonna find on YouTube or on the web as an instructional aid to learn how to use this calculator. It's, um, it's an unusual device. It still sells, I think, for about $85, and that's what it sold for when I bought it back in the Stone Ages in grad school. But it's great for time value of money calculations. You know. Amaze your friends at barbecues and parties. Pull this out of your briefcase or your purse and, uh, and you show people you know how to use it. This has been uh, the video on uh, the Hewlett Packard using the Hewlett Packard 12C calculator. I'm Tom Mehawk. Thanks for watching. Here's, by the way, here's where you can find me. I'm at TomMehawk.com on the web, at YouTube and resume optimization on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching. This is my personal finance course. I'm Tom Mehawk. This is the video about the Hewlett Packard 12C calculator. Take care. See you next time.